So if we go into our views again, and then we look for the budget view. Um, so, all right, so just real, real quick here, some of the, the models that we're using here, we've gone over categories. Uh, there's also a model called budget category amount, which um, it, it's a way to basically associate a, a specific budget um, to a specific category in that budget to an amount. So for instance, uh, I wanna know, okay, uh, for my February budget, uh, I have a category of food that has a budgeted amount of like $2,000 or something. That's a really crazy food budget, but you know, just if you want to ball, just ball. So um, in that case, we want to have a budget category amount of that, that kind of associates those together. So that's, that's what that object is. And just for the sake of looking at it, it's right here, budget category amount, pretty simple. Okay, so what we're doing here is once we have our categories, uh, well, actually keep in mind, these are all the categories. These are, these are the built-in categories that exist. So this is gonna pull all of the built-in categories from the database. Um, and this is the logic I have now without user-defined categories. So in this situation, we're going to uh, iterate through each of the categories. We're gonna see, okay, do we have a, an amount on this budget for that category? Because if not, just either group it into miscellaneous or ignore it. Um, probably the miscellaneous route because you, you still want the budget to kind of like net. You want it to sum to all of the, of the transactions that you have on your, your bank activity. But anyway, uh, so we want to say if this category has an amount on the budget that, that, we've, that we've added to the budget. Then we also want to know, does it have subcategories? Because if you put food on your budget only, you want it to include like groceries, maybe restaurants, uh, maybe farmer's markets. You want all those categories to be underneath the food umbrella. So we need to get all those children categories and sum those up too. So what we're doing here is uh, these, this branch in logic, this if statement, uh, each section is pretty much the same. The only difference is one of them is finding the sum of all the subcategories if they exist. And then the other one is just finding the parent category if it doesn't have any children. Um, so here, in this situation, um, let's say that we have children. Um, in this case, then we're gonna use some Django querying here. Um, and I might do a separate video getting into like how to uh, look at the SQL here, because I think it's important to see kind of are these queries actually the most like performant uh, for what we're trying to do. Um, but in this case, I wanted something that works. So, so this, is what I, this is what I was going for here. Um, so if we have children categories, then um, I want to sum those categories by, or I want to sum the transactions by, by that category. Um, so, th so what I'm doing here is I'm going to get all of the transactions. So picture a SQL query here where we're saying something like select star from transactions uh, where date equals, where, where month equals a given month, February, uh, and year equals a given year, 2021. Um, and uh, this is an or query here. So this is saying, uh, and the built-in category, I transact, like the transaction dot built-in category ID is equal to the category ID that we're iterating through right now. So let's say like, all right, let's say, uh, find me all the transactions in February of 2021 that have a foreign key um, that uh, link to food. So all of the food transactions. Um, and then all of, and then also we want to, to do a query for all of the built-in category, I, all the transactions that have built-in category IDs that are in the list of children category IDs. So like if food was ID of 20, we want to find uh, the list of, uh, we, we want to find all, all transactions with IDs that are uh, either 20 or like 21 through 25, which happen to be like the, uh, the children of that category. Um, why don't we look at this, what this looks like? Um, uh, so let me, let me just go to the budget here. So uh, if you look here, the overall query would be something like, uh, select star from transactions where month equals February and year equals 2021 and um, transaction dot built in category ID equals cat ID or transaction dot built in category ID in uh, the list of children category IDs. 
Then we're gonna do a group by built-in category because we wanna group the transaction values by um, built-in category. Um, so that way we can see them on the budget as such. Um, now this is going to create an aggregate here. So if we're gonna group the transactions by category, we have to have um, either like the field that we're aggregating or we have to have an aggregate function here. Um, so in this case, we'll, it'll, it'll say um, select um, sum. So it's not gonna be select star from transactions because we have to aggregate it. So it's gonna be select sum um, of the transaction amount per category. And then um, Django translates this to SQL query and this amount sum is gonna be an alias. Um, so then we're just gonna order it by the, the sum for each category. Um, so then we're, we're gonna, this, is, this should return, um, uh, basically in, in SQL, you would think of it in terms of uh, rows of, of categories, um, which are aggregated by the um, total sum of the transaction amounts in, in each category. Um, so once we have this, this is gonna return a query set of dictionaries. Um, a query set is a, is a Django thing, uh, but let me show you what that would look like. The, trans, the transsum by cat, so this query set object, uh, let's look, see what it looks like. So for each category that we have in our, in our budget, um, it's gonna return a query set of uh, dictionaries um, per category that basically specify uh, the category itself and all the children categories, um, uh, if they have them. Uh, otherwise, it'll just be a query set of a single dictionary, which we can key into. Um, and so either way, if you have children or not, it'll just be either one uh, query set of one dictionary or, or multiple. And so what we wanna do, if, if we have any, uh, basically if we have any categories within that query set or any dictionaries within that query set, we want to basically go through them and sum all the amounts. So in this case, we wanna go through the query set that's returned. We wanna go through each dictionary in the query set and we want to uh, create a total sum of, of each category that matches um, for that parent category. And so at the end of the day, what we have is, uh, that, that we're actually going to use here is, so we're gonna have the description and then we're gonna have the amount, which is the amount that we budgeted for that category. So that's the field on the, the budget category amount. So that's what the user sets is like, we want food to be $1,000. And the cat sum is what we did earlier, which we ag aggregated the transactions by category. And then we, we basically summed up all of the amounts of the parent category and the subcategories to create just a single sum for that pa parent category. And then we have an ID, which is uh, the category ID, which uh, we'll use to render what we wanna render um, in the template. And so that's kind of, that's where I started here. Basically do a query for the transactions, do a group by uh, the category, uh, aggregate the transaction amounts by category, um, and, then, and then render that onto the template. So that way, at the end of the day, what we have is kind of a list of categories. I'm gonna continue this. At the end of the day, what we have is a list of categories here. Um, I haven't updated how much I budgeted for these amounts, um, but we will get the actual uh, aggregated transaction amounts per category, which is what you want when you're comparing to how much you budgeted. Um, so this is where I'm starting on categories. Um, I'm gonna get a lot deeper into this. So uh, if I find something particularly interesting, and I'm, I'm sure I will, then I might make another video to kind of expand into more advanced category, categorization, as well as some of the SQL behind this. Um, but I hope this was interesting. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to categorize transactions, um, and also how to basically aggregate objects in, in Django using some of these uh, query methods here. So I um, hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, just mention them in the, in the comment below. Uh, happy to take a look at those and answer any that I can. Uh, and uh, if you want to see future videos, would love it if you could subscribe. And uh, j so I know that uh, this video is valuable to you. Um, either way, I'll see you next time. Bye.